Okay, continuing on my little series on uh, some of the things I've done to my uh, Smith & Weston here. Um, this video, I'm probably just going to talk about some of the actual um, modifications I made to the actual pistol um, as opposed to the magazines. And I think I'm going to do probably a separate one on a few of the, uh, probably a quick one on the holsters that I have for it to kind of break things up since it appears that I can ramble quite a bit. Um, first things first, I guess I need to do safety check to uh, I'll put everyone at ease that I'm not going to uh, have a ND here. Um, so like I said, nothing in the chamber. The magazine, you can see, I'm going to be probably inserting and playing around with these a little bit. Um, no ammunition here at all. You know, there's no ammunition off camera here. It's um, it's uh, far away and there's no problems or potential for it to jump in the gun and have a cause an ND here. Um, so, so, so if you have or haven't watched, um, I did another video kind of a little bit more in depth talking about these uh, mag guts extensions that I have on my magazines here. Um, so if you want to see a little bit more about, more about that specifically, you can go check out that video. Um, or if it's not up, it will be up soon. Um, so. Um, yeah, the pistol itself, um, went and got a little, uh, I guess, dorky with this guy, I, uh, with this pistol. I decided to, um, you know, play around with some color fill a little bit, and this should be metallic silver. I think I, I covered in the logo here. I covered it. <laughs> Pink did some color fill on the front and the Smith & Wesson logo, and if you flip it over here, you can see I did it on the other side as well. Um, I think it looks pretty, pretty, uh pretty uh, nice. I think it kind of pops. I don't know how it's going to show on the video, um, but uh, you know, certainly in person looks pretty looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't really care. It's kind of a, <laughs> it was kind of a playing around to say, hey, what can I do to uh, kind of make this look a little more visually appealing? Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's it. That's kind of the little dorky color fill I did. Um, and kind of, I guess this to start, um, again, the mag guts uh, stuff is in here. So this is the flesh magazine with a little, uh, uh, has the, it is a mag guts plus two um, installation, um, plus two kit. Um, it does give you this, this little bit of extension on the grip, um, which is actually, you know, in my case, my hands are fairly small either anyway, um, but it really does help. Let's see if we can flip it around here give a little bit of additional purchase it you know really adds to to the pinky um, gripping on here so that that much worked great for me you know at least you know my hands aren't all that big anyway I didn't really have much issues you know without this extra one quarter of an inch on here but uh, but yeah it's uh, it's uh, it, it's kind of neat it works okay um, kind of with the flush fit and this extension the one thing I kind of don't like this is the only complaint I have about it and maybe because it's just me being a little uh, a little wimpy is that you, know, you get the corners in here the corner on this back um, you know this kind of grabs uh, notches into your your hand a little bit so if you're doing a lot of shooting um, you know it kind of gets a little annoying especially if you're not wearing gloves um, if you if you um, if, I'm sure if you put this on the the eight round mag, the longer one, um, this is going to pop out the bottom of that, and it's probably not going to be an issue for people, um, you know. And of course, if you're using this in a self defense scenario, this is obviously not going to cause uh, any hang ups or, or any issues on on your end when you're trying to use your your pistol. It's just kind of one of those when you take take it to the range and you're shooting, uh, you know, 50, 100 rounds, it kind of gets a little annoying after a while. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, with with that, uh, with, even with the extension, it kind of looks it looks pretty pretty sharp, I think. Um, so so what else did I do to this? Um, the other kind of uninterest interesting thing is the rubber granulate talon grip. Um, I don't know if anyone saw the other video I did for my bodyguard. Um, I'd have a similar rub rubber granulate grip on that, um, but that was a it was a Galloway provided one. It was. Uh, you know, it, it worked fine. This one's an actual, is the actual talon grip rubber granulate. Um, and it kind of wraps around wholly, um, complete, you know, fully on the guard up here on the grip. Um, I did use some additional generic grip tape to kind of, uh, 
uh, improve some of the other grip around the uh, around the, uh, the the trigger guard and a little bit up on the front if I decide to with my secondary hand if I decide to grip grip the trigger guard you know there's a little bit of grippiness there for me uh, and I do like putting a little bit of you know grip in the fronts of the frame so kind of my finger I know it's there you know when I'm grabbing with my other hand you know that finger is there you know obviously this is kind of you know it's kind of hard for me to grip this way because this is not really how I would shoot but there's kind of basically it's just places for my fingers to to feel like oh this is this is home type of thing you know like homes at home like the home keys on a keyboard um, again you know put I put some grip on the trigger guard on the front here I really don't want I'm shooting I typically don't drip the grip the trigger guard but I put it there regardless kind of I guess maybe to more to experiment with um, yeah more mod more mods the kind of the other mod is the sights which I kind of still have the packaging in here because my old Smith & Wesson sights are kept inside but it's these uh, True Glow TFX Pro um, they're hybrid you know tritium night sights with uh, fiber optic um, fiber optic during the day um, they try to kind of glow during the day and there's kind of the both uh, the the advantage that you know that the fiber optic is supposed to be bright in the day and then but then you have the night sights that that glow during the dark and, you know I, I like night sights on my gun I think um, in general if I had to choose night sights only your fiber optic I would choose the night sights um, but the but the fiber optic is is nice as well um, so I, I tried these these out for for this gun um, I do have some Trigicon just regular night sights on some of the other guns that I have and it, it it seems to me with with those you know if I if I like say there's an outdoor range near nearby here that's you know it's not it's not dark but it's you know it's not the brightest in there and at that point it's kind of the worst of two worlds in that you know you don't have the fiber optics glowing brighter in that place and you know it's not dark enough for the night sights to really pop so so you're kind of relying on the outline circles and using a standard standard light uh, three dot picture and it's it, it, it doesn't really pop as just a regular three dot in those scenarios um, and of course, you know that's just at the at the range. But you know, I, I thought with this gun, I I I was planning on carrying it a lot more than I actually do. But again, I was making a lot of investments in in this pistol to um, to use um, kind of the, the, what I was was thinking would be the best and most versatile um, accessories to it. Um, so again, you see the actual sights here. You can kind of see um, if you're looking top down here. You know, you can see the little fiber optic, green fiber optic inserts in here, which uh, you know help, uh, which uh, you know help help the dots glow during the day. And the covered in pieces here would be where the actual tritium vials are for for the night sights. Um, you know, I really like the the machining on these. You know, they tend to be really you know quite long. You know, and I guess your front uh, you know your front dot is is back about a good. Uh, you know three eighths of an inch or so from where it would need to be for the for to to uh, to house both the fiber optic and the night sight but uh, you know I, th I think it, it looks pretty uh, pretty sweet you know one thing that that's really nice as well is there's you know if you need to do one-handed manipulations there's a nice flat ridge here on these uh, on these sites as well um, you know if you try to get a view of the actual site picture um, from the camera here, you can see the two back sights. They're, you know, the green, the green uh, dots are in there. They're they're not ringed. But then if you look up, my voice is sounding weird because I'm trying to actually look at the screen on my phone as well. You can see the the front sight here is um, is ringed in orange, which really helps pop and helps with the sight acquisition. So if I'm actually looking at it here, yeah, it, it really it really shows up. So I don't know if I can kind of get an accurate sight picture on on the camera here, but you can kind of get a sense of what that looks like. It's uh, actually it's pretty pretty nice. It's a pretty nice sight picture. 
Um, obviously haven't been really out shooting this in the dark or anything, but you know, you do, you know, I do go in a dark room and say, see how they glow and try to act, uh, to acquire a sight picture and it tends to work out, you know, they, they tend to be uh, pretty nice. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's, I, I guess kind of the trade off with this is the night sights, they, they don't seem to glow as bright as my just regular Trigicon sights. And then obviously the fiber optic in here, um, they don't glow as, as bright as some of a, uh, as just a standalone fiber optic would. So it's one of those things, it's like you get the ad additional functionality of both the, of both the fiber optic and the night sight, but it doesn't seem that either works as good as just a standalone uh, night sight or just a standalone fiber optic, like the high vis where, you know, the fiber optic, uh, the fiber optic wire or what do you call it, whatever you call it, a piece of fiber optic is is completely exposed. You know, the positive of, of this approach though is, you know, I have, from what I understand, fiber optic can be pretty prone to breaking, especially if it's uh, fully exposed like that. In this case, you know, it's pretty encased in here, so um, it sh shouldn't have any issues with it holding up, I hope. Um, certainly, it would become a pretty much an issue if one of these uh, fiber optic uh, lines or, or vials or whatever you want to call them, if one of these should happen to crack, then it you're probably, I would think, you're pretty much hosed on your actual site itself. You know, that's just kind of an assumption on my, my side. But um, yeah, at when, I, when I purchased these, these were kind of the, these were the top of the line ones that uh, True Glow were offering at the, at the point, at that point. You know, I haven't checked their site to see if there's anything uh, newer out there, but uh, but again, for for these for these night sites, for these sites, these were uh, much improved over the stock sites. Um, and again, installed them myself. Um, these seem to be pretty accurate. I have no issues with these. Um, you know, with the accuracy and doing the the self install with a little site pusher I, I, I purchased, they uh, tend to work great. Um, gun itself, you know. <laughs> I start talking about kind of my thoughts on on the shield. I obviously, you know, there's this is a non-safety version. When I bought it, I wanted a thumb safety, and uh, you know, this is all they had in stock. And the place I bought it, they were running a a pretty nice sale. So, you know, I, I either had to decide whether to buy pay extra for a uh, thumb safety or just go go with this one without. I went without. Don't regret it. Kind of happy. I don't have a thumb safety on it now because. Uh, um, especially these guns uh, and the way I, you know, when I do carry them and the holsters I put them in. Um, and again, I'll talk about a few of the holsters I, I have um, in a separate video. I'm going to break that out. Um, you know, it's it, it's locked in pretty safe, especially for the for the for the holsters I actually use, and um, I have no qualms about carrying it. Um, again, this this guy with just the trigger safety, you know, internal safety, and I'm never not worried about dropping these. My biggest hang up with with all of these striker pistols with uh, no ex no external safeties and everything else is just um, I always have uh, a mental hang up with reholstering so you know if I'm carrying this gun I, I tend to buy holsters that I can put the gun in the holster and then I can put the holster in my inside the waistband in my pants um, externally you know ex in a outside the waistband holster if I did use it for this I wouldn't care too much but uh, I tend to prefer the Springfields with the grip safety because it kind of it goes beyond me having any any worries about you know having an ND while holstering the gun. Um, I think that's it. Um, I I this this the shield. I I picked this up in a gun store and and I was like this fits my hand perfectly. You know as I said my my hands tend to be uh, I tend to have a little smaller hands so kind of the narrow the narrow frame and kind of the, the the smaller grip you know it just felt awesome to me when i first picked it up then i put these talon grips on for additional grip and it just feels amazing um you know i shoot this really really good probably better than i have uh you know uh i shoot it better than i have uh than I, I probably should. I mean, it's it's just one of those things. The gun is so comfortable. It's a little sh small, compact, short barrel pistol, and I, I probably shoot it just as good or better than my Glock 19. You know, I probably don't shoot it as good as my Springfield XD XDM, but but almost every other, this is probably I shoot this probably better than almost every other gun I own except for the XDM, 
it's it's just it's just great. It's one of these these things that really really fits for me, and that's even with the, the stock hinge trigger. Um, you know, am I going to be looking at the the apex upgrade down the road? Um, I don't know, but but right now with this the stock trigger, I'm perfectly fine with it. I really like it. Um, and again, this 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 pistol is is great. It's light. Um, as a carry pistol, I mean, I can't I can't think think of, of anything else they really could do to improve it you know m better materials maybe at some point but you know it, for, for the price point it is um, it's phenomenal you know I tend to carry my XDS a bit more um, just because I'm more of a Springfield guy but you know I shoot this better than my XDS this is lighter than my XDS um, it's 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 just it's just a it, it's a great gun you know I, I should I should be carrying this all the time but um, it's kind of number three in my rotation behind the bodyguard and my XDS. Um, but if you're if you're thinking all about buying one of these, uh, you know, certainly go out and try it, shoot it. Um, I'd be shocked if you didn't didn't, didn't like to shoot this because this is this is a for its price point, for its function. This is a phenomenal pistol. Um, and I think um, I, th I think that's it for this video. I'll call this to an end. Um, and uh, I'll have a separate video that I'll talk about uh, some of my holsters and the, uh, the little uh, magazine holster that I tend to use quite a bit. Okay, thank you.